What if I said that you could average 300% or more growth this year without doing any additional marketing or branding, without hiring any new team members? And what if that growth could be permanent? Or what if no matter what size you are right now, even if you're already 10, 50, $100 million company, what if it were possible to immediately double your revenue and reduce your overall expenses? Well, that's all possible when we acquire other companies. And that's what we're going to go over today. Hey, before we get started, subscribe to this channel because we're going to be giving away a $5,000 business strategy with me and companies pay six figures to be in my advisory program. So even just one meeting could literally flip the switch and change the game for you and your company almost overnight. Now, we've got some pretty aggressive growth targets for each of my companies every single year. And we use a bunch of different strategies to make sure that we meet or exceed each of our annual goals. One of which is my absolute favorite and it's what I want to share with you today. It's acquiring other companies. And and don't let this get overwhelming to you because when you know what we're about to go over today, acquiring another company can be a simple process. And the growth that you could experience when done right is dramatic. But if you don't know what we're going to go over today and you do it wrong, you could lose a whole lot of time and money and maybe even a few years off your life from stress. And I, I know what I'm talking about there, unfortunately. You could see some gray hairs from the times that we've messed this up. So I'm going to talk high level right now and I'm going to go over the main moving pieces, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go over legal or accounting aspects because you're going to want to do that with your accountant or your attorney, right? Um, okay, but let's get started with some guidelines. First, you need to understand what the acquisition math is. Now, we only acquire a company that already has the skill sets or the assets or the relationships or the customers that we need to grow. So if we know that another company is for sale for maybe $10 and they have a specific skill set that will easily make us $10 more profitable, then I want to look deeper into that deal. Or maybe they've got assets that we could use in our company or that we could sell and become $10 more profitable. And if that's the case, then I want to look deeper into that deal. Or maybe they've got key relationships that we could leverage and become $10 more profitable. And if that's the case, again, I want to look deeper into that deal. Or maybe they've got a customer database that we could sell our products to or our services to and become $10 more profitable. Then definitely, yes, I want to look deeper into that deal. Next, after that, we only acquire a company that we can assimilate into our culture in a way that at least doubles our revenue and at the same time just marginally increases our expenses. For example, if we're currently making $10 a year gross revenue and they're also generating $10 a year in gross revenue and by acquiring them, then we grow to at least $20 a year in gross revenue. But at the same time, there's going to be a whole lot of overlapping expenses that we could get rid of. Like, we don't need two accounting teams. We don't need two CRM softwares. Um, we don't need two high-priced CEOs. So in most cases, we could literally double or more our revenue with just a marginal increase in our expenses. And we're not looking to acquire every single opportunity that comes across our desk. You need to be highly selective. We might have dozens of opportunities every single month in my company but I will only look seriously at one acquisition every year or two. So you might speak to you know, six, 12, even more companies who are ready to sell, but you might only acquire one, and the one that you'll acquire is the one that fits your current needs the best. Now, after you find a company that fits those two requirements, the only thing between a win and a loss is the negotiation, and there's a lot of little moving pieces in a negotiation, but let me give you a typical scenario. The, ol the owner almost always wants an immediate payout of some amount of money. Let's call it a million dollars for this example. Now, I have to take a step back before I get into this because I forgot to tell you something that's pretty important. And, and this killed their first few deals years ago, but there's a good chance at least for you to learn from my mistakes here and make me feel a little bit better. Because the very first two chances that I had to acquire companies, I literally walked into the negotiation and I lost out on what could have been two super sweet deals for us. Um, and actually, not, not just for my company, but for both sides. When I say us, I'm talking about both companies. It should be a sweet deal for both of you. And the reason why I lost it is because I went in not knowing what I needed to know. And most deals die because the wrong due diligence is done. You can't rely on the due diligence just from your accounting team, just from your legal team, just from your marketing team. There's gotta be something a lot deeper. And this is the core. This is what makes this actually work. You see, now, before I even sit down to negotiate anything, I want to know as much as humanly possible about, yes, the company and the industry and the competition, but even more importantly, I want to know about the owner and why they're selling. 
Now, I've never bought a company without meeting with the owner several times and building trust and finding out why they're selling. Uh, maybe they're retiring. And if they are retiring, what does retirement look like for them? Or maybe they're selling to fund their kids' college or to start a new business. And if so, what kind of business and how much money do they need to get it off the ground? I want to know everything. You want to know literally as much as possible about the reason why the owner is selling because when you know that, it's much easier to make this a win-win for both sides. Here's an example. If I walked into a negotiation and the owner wanted the million dollars paid up front, I, it'd be pretty rare that I would go for that right off the bat, unless the deal was like super amazingly weighed in my favor for some reason. Like, I don't know, maybe the poor guy selling a $10 million company for a million dollars to pay a hospital bill or something like that. And which in that case, I mean, that was a bad example because probably I'd work something out to help him because I wouldn't want to take advantage of somebody like that. But let's say he's selling a million dollar paid up front company and I already did all the math, and I know at least three ways that I'm going to make this deal a big win for me at a million dollars. And by the way, we always want three ways to profit from any deal. But let's say I'm not willing to take all the risk by paying him everything up front, which is pretty common for me. I almost always want to pay the current owner with their money as much as possible. And to do that, I first need to know if the price is firm so that I could go back with a lower offer. But in order for that to happen, I'd want to relate my offer to whatever I already knew about their next stage in life. If I find out that they're retiring and, and, and living their dream of sailing around the world in a $400,000 boat, then maybe I would go back to them with an offer of a little bit more than that. Maybe I'd go back to them with an offer of six fifty, dollars uh, and, and that's a big discount. And at that kind of a discount, I might be willing to pay in full today. But you should know that this, this is a key rule. Most small business owners under $10 million They've almost always got an emotional number in their head and they rarely want to budge from it. I mean, it's a crazy, you, you, it's crazy to sit down in front of somebody who has an emotional number in their head. So if this owner asks for a million dollars, the chances of them coming down from that is pretty damn uncommon. But our best deals kind of look like this. I might go back to them and offer them maybe $400,000 today plus six fifty dollars over the next 36 months. That gives them way more than enough to get their boat. And if they finance their boat, they've got a bucket load of money left over for gas and food and, and pretty much gr well, great experiences at every single port that they stop at on their trip. And I'm going to paint that whole picture for them. Plus, they're getting more than the million that they asked for, which is motivating for them to say yes and give me the ability to absorb every valuable aspect of their company into mine. I'm going to take their employees. I'm going to take their best systems. I'm going to take their customers, their brand loyalty, their relationships, and even their hard assets. And I'm going to go to work doubling my revenue or more. And I always have a fallback plan. Like I said before, you always want three ways to profit from any single deal that you get involved in. And in this example, if I did the math beforehand, which I would always do, and I know that if all shit hits the fan, I can monetize their customer list and sell, uh, sell their hard assets and make at least my investment back plus some. Um, and although that's never really happened to me in a deal, I'm not even close, I always have a contingency plan so that I could sleep at night. Um, now, what you're gonna find if you stay really open-minded to this is that there's far more companies out there who are willing to sell than you could ever imagine. The very first time I sp started speaking about this with one of our clients, they, they sat there and they thought, well, gosh, there's nobody, I don't know anybody who's selling their company. I promise you, when you start opening up your mind, you're going to see so many opportunities. And most of the very best ones are not advertised for sale. They're literally competitors of yours who are tired of working or who have other dreams that they want to move on to. So the, the question becomes, how much more could you grow if you acquire one of your competition? Tell me in the comment section below. Would you grow an additional, I don't know, half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, $10 million, $50 million? Let me know because I've seen small companies make giant jumps in their growth uh, by acquiring just one company. And medium companies become industry giants with just one acquisition. This is a key strategy that my companies use, but also a key strategy that the companies that I advise use to two, five, ten times our growth curve year over year. And if you want to know more about how we do that, check us out at chrisguerrero.com and click on the consulting tab. Now, I can't promise that you're going to be able to get in or that there's going to be any kind of openings there. Um, because I only work with a handful of companies each year because most of my time is spent developing my own brands. But if you do get in, man, the coming months will be exciting for you, whether we go into acquisition mode or not. Now, be open-minded to the possibilities of acquiring a company 
within the next eight to 12 months. Because when you do that, when you change your thought process and you do that, this could be a game changer for you. It's literally thinking outside the box. Also, take a second and subscribe to my channel so that you're the very first to hear about videos like this. Go ahead, subscribe now, and tell me in the comment area below how much more you think you could make if you acquired another company this year. No matter what stage of growth you're at, we all need an unbiased review of what's working and also what might not be working anymore in our business. Because the greatest cause of stagnation in any company, the reason most companies hit plateaus in their growth is because they fail to see the roadblocks that stop momentum in its tracks.